Welcome to the next edition of the Briefings Direct podcast series. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at Inter Arbor Solutions, your host and moderator. Today's Briefings Direct discussion focuses on how optimizing and automating accounts payable functions gives businesses the insights and levers to better transform. We'll examine how improved control and management over cash flow, payables, and related functions elevates overall financial situational awareness. Stay with us now as we explore how adoption of intelligent automation joins the expected consolidation and convergence of final uh, financial operations and applications in the office of the chief financial officer. We may well soon be seeing more shifts in the required skills and organization within financial org operations and companies, so leaders need to prepare now. Here to share his insights as a business operations efficiency veteran and expert is our guest. Please join me now in welcoming Jason Kurtz, Chief Executive Officer at Bazware. Welcome, Jason. Well, glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Dana. You bet. So, Jason, before we get started, let's put some context around our discussion. What are some of the major trends shaping the need for better accounts, payable automation, and why is there an imperative to add intelligence and automation to overall back office business operations? Yeah, I think the imperative is we're dealing in truly uh, uh, uncharted waters here for a lot of CFOs. If you think about what's going on in our world, if you think about the macro environment, you know, we've got uh, potentially recessions in some areas of the world. We've got higher inflation rates. We've got higher interest rates all affecting us and our businesses in various ways. If you think about uh, supply chains, right, we still, believe it or not, from the pandemic, we haven't recovered from supply chain shortages in many ways. So that's an impact uh, on CFOs and what's going on in our world. We still have people working in hybrid uh, environments or remote environments, and we still have a situation where we have people, companies who can't fill the jobs they have, their open recs and accounts payable. Then you've got, just to add to the fun of it, we've got countries like France and Germany and Poland and Spain adding regulatory requirements for how you send and receive an invoice in their countries and countries like Mexico and Brazil changing their regula regulations on a regular basis. Like I said, it's it's really almost um, unheralded. Never before have we seen this much happening to CFOs in this area at one time. And you think about people like me, you know, I'm in my mid fifties. I've never even worked in an environment where there's a recession plus high interest rates plus inflation. So you throw that in, we've never seen it before, right? For many of us who are in these roles. So I really do think it's this unique time in our history and in our careers for many of us that we're dealing with so many challenges at once. Yes. And because there's so much happening at once that is unprecedented, it's hard to look at that historic record and say, okay, I know what's going to happen next is there's very little uh, clear visibility as to what we're going to be dealing with in terms of our top line and, um, you know, constraints on our spending over the next six to 12 months. A hundred percent, right? We, we are living in uncertainty right now. And so few companies have great data and information that can help them navigate this uncertainty. But one of the key documents, the key pieces of information and data is the invoice. And if you can get that right and have great data from your invoice, man, that makes your job as a CFO a lot easier. Right. So we need to be able to get as good a look at the record and the data that we've got as as much as we possibly can, given that there are these larger spinning unknowns. And uh, that's going to lead to us discussing more intelligence and automation. But I'd first like to go to some of the challenges uh, now that we know that it's a difficult macro situation, right. what are some of the challenges facing businesses in order to get more tactical and strategic uh, control? Yeah, so, you know, again, I, and I'll use our world, right? There's some really interesting challenges that you you wouldn't believe are still challenges, right? So for, for, for a lot of businesses, we want to improve profitability, right, in uncertain times. We want to unlock working capital, What's one of the biggest barriers to that uh, company over 90 percent of companies say they can't pay an invoice on time because they don't have it improved approved in time. So because they have 
bad data because they haven't enabled their suppliers because they're dealing with scanning an OCR, which is poor quality and it takes time and it's hard to manage exceptions. That's critical for folks. So that's a, that's a really important one. And that unlocks lots of value. Another is, you know, we talked about, we don't even, companies don't even even have a full staff of people in accounts payable and they're working remotely. So how do you make sure your people who might be new or you might have fewer of them are more efficient and effective? How do you know that they're following the policies and procedures you have for your company? How do you quality check the work that they're doing in remote worlds? Because you want to do that more with newer employees, right? That you're, that you're bringing into your organization. You need automation. You need tools. You need things where you can embed your policies and procedures into your uh, workflow and your processes. And, and you can't do that in a manual world. So those are just a couple of examples, but I think they're real life reality for a lot of the companies that we deal with and that we help in the world from an accounts payable perspective. And they need this, these improvements because these are really our barriers to their success right now. Yeah. You know, Jason, both you and I have been in this business enough and long enough to have seen wave upon wave of new technologies and approaches. And that's been great. You wanted to use the best of breed when those solutions came uh, on online. But what it's left many organizations with is sort of the scattered and disruptive mix of things that come from different eras even. Yeah, without question. Uh, we joke a lot about, you know, an era of scanning an OCR, right? That's just one example of what you're talking about. And for a lot of companies, scanning an OCR was check the box on electronic invoicing, right? We've done it. But you and I know that that's not really the case, right? You don't get any good data out of that. You have manual intervention. It slows your processes down. It's like using a payphone, right? Or a, a fax machine. And no one uses that anymore, but there's still lots of people who have that as their e-invoicing solution, which is, you know, crazy, you know, and then to your point, I think lots of people, lots of companies have layered different technologies into their environment over time, right? Maybe it was a procurement solution or a sourcing solution or their ERP. And they're trying to figure out, at least in the accounts payable, how do I make all of that work? All my invoices come and originate in different places. Uh, how do I put something on top of that? that is modern and usable and purpose-built for me in that kind of an environment that's very fragmented and has lots of different uh, offerings and capabilities. Mm -hmm. I need something that sits on top of that that makes it more efficient and effective for my AP department. So again, you you hit the, hit the nail on the head, right? There's a lot of complexity uh, in the companies that we work with. Right. Part of the good news, though, is as you alluded to earlier, the invoice has a certain beneficial um, you know, role to play when you go fully digital, you can layer into that lots of uh, metadata, you can bring process to bear, and you can use that as sort of a, a powerful tool to usher in other uh, applications, data uh, benefits, and process benefits. So tell me a little bit about why when you do this right, and you sort of superpower your uh, invoice that that has lots of cascading benefits. Yeah, I think one of the best ones that we haven't talked about yet is, you know, when you get that invoicing right and you have good data from your suppliers uh, and you've received good invoice data, that gives you insights into what you bought, from whom, how much you paid, what the trends are around that. And that gives you a basis for your spend analytics, right? And in this macro environment where there's a lot of uncertainty and we're trying to save money, and use that money to fund growth where we can find it or put it away in the bank for profitability, that's a great place, right? But you got to have that invoice data first to really understand what it is you bought from whom the pricing and all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's one. Two, the other part of the invoice data is unlocking working capital, right? So many companies out in the world have, you know, discount payment terms that the classic 210 net 30, but they can't pay something in 10 days, so they can't get the benefit. But imagine if we could unlock literally billions of dollars in potential early payment discounts or working capital benefits that we can use to then invest in our growth in the areas where our business needs. But you got to have a good invoice with good data, well-structured in a timely manner, and be able to uh, handle that. Lots of companies can't do that. So 
I think those are a couple of examples where that invoice can really unlock a lot of benefits um, for companies in these in these uncertain times. And it's only gotten more important to manage that cash uh, now that we're up to some, in some cases, 5% overnight and uh, much higher rates on uh, cash uh, in general. So the imperative to get fast and detailed and bring that organizational efficiency and agility to bear is higher than ever, or at least in the last 15 years, right? A hundred percent. And, and it's more valuable for us, you know, as, uh, as an organization, it's more valuable for our customers because, you know, in many cases, they've got billions of dollars in spend that they can unlock, uh, millions, hundreds of millions in working capital to do that in a higher interest rate environment. But it's also important for, for their suppliers, right? Because the, their cost of capital is going up as well. And in this world where we still have some limited supply in the world, right? You know, suppliers can't always deliver 100% of what they did three years ago. They may be at 85 or 90%. So who gets what? Who gets that 85 or 90% instead of the 100%? I would hypothesize, and I think our customers are telling this, that good payers, people who are able to pay on time or when a supplier wants or needs it, become a customer of choice and they may, if there's a limited supply, they may get more than their fair share. So there are a lot of benefits for doing this um, and being able to pay when you and your suppliers want to be able to pay. And so you're um, teeing up some of the changes in skills required. So whereas diligence and operational integrity and process efficiency may have been top of the mind when it came to bringing people into the office of the CFO you're talking more about analytics and even entrepreneurial uh, innovation around how can we create new ways to best use the money and reward customers and maybe even punish bad uh, payers and that sort of thing. Right. So we need a different kind of person in, the, in these roles, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think in almost every role in the finance department now, data, uh, comfort with data and analytics is becoming more and more critical. Comfort with these technologies, right? That that help you with automation and insights and um, how you manage your resources and how you manage your capital. So I think those are two of the skill sets that comfort with technology, comfort with data and analytics that are probably two of the, the most important. And then look, I think the other thing we're seeing is, you know, the office of the CFO, it's broadening its responsibilities too, right? They're, they're taking on more and more operational responsibilities and impact in organizations. So being consultative, Right. And, um, and influence, being good influencers, right. And educators, those are all part of the skill sets that a good finance organization has to have right now. Yeah. There's no uh, closing the door in the back office and then only coming out <laughs> once a quarter with a report anymore. Right. That's right. You can't do that. You can't do that. All right. Let's put some, uh, some meat around some of these solutions and practical operations. <clears throat> What's leading the, um, the current new uh, thinking about dedicated AP and how are these solutions going from nice uh, thoughts that we can share to actual uh, brass tacks in place operational um, solutions? Yeah, no, if we talk, and I think you're talking about metrics there, right? Like what are some of the benefits that people are, are getting from these solutions? If, if I'm interpreting the crest, the question correctly. Yeah, we're seeing incredible benefits, you know, um, when when we see automation in the accounts payable function, you go from a company on average processing, you know, maybe uh, five, six, seven thousand invoices per FTE to companies processing 30, 40 and even 50,000 invoices a year uh, per FTE. So massive productivity benefits. You see the level of electronic invoices from your suppliers going from, you know, on average for uh, the industry 34% to kind of our, you know, if you took Bassware's best in class customers, like 99% or nearly 100%. So again, that plays into that structured great data that you want to have around an invoice. If you look at invoice processing time, again, the industry average is around 11 days for accounts payable functions. Bassware and I think best in class AP customers are looking at, you know, hours or minutes, you know, less than a day. And again, that's part of what you need to do to unlock that working capital benefit. And you have companies that are maybe, you know, 20 or 30% of their invoices 
uh, being touchless, meaning you never physically have to manually have an intervention into that invoice from receipt through payment being around 21%. But again, password best in class customers are over 90%. So these are the kind of metrics. This is the kind of value that I think, you know, accounts payable automation solutions and, and in particular Basware customers are able to achieve. Cool. Um, so these are sort of some tactical uh, KPIs that you're yeah. rattling off, which is great. Um, how do you measure and promote and improve productivity? I know that's a really tough nut to crack, even to find. But can we elevate this from these uh, tactical KPIs into something larger when it, you know, we think about transformation and things like productivity overall? Sure. Um, you know, you take a look at uh, a customer of ours uh, like Heineken, right? Implemented uh, Basswords AP automation solution. Um, it, you know, streamlined invoice processing, reduced manual efforts, you know, better data accuracy and efficiency. All of that uh, resulted in greater than 50% reduction in their cost to process invoices within their function as a whole. So over 50% reduction in overall accounts payable team and organization costs by implementing an AP automation solution. So re can be really impactful. Same kind of thing at um, Toyota Industrial, another customer of ours, um, where they are, again, same kind of benefits and focus, streamlining the invoice processing, reducing manual work, getting your suppliers to be able to send invoices electronically, uh, get you that uh, better data, but also get you that significantly reduced um, cycle time and, pro and invoice processing time savings, and you get better spend visibility and access, and again, um, well over 50% reduction in the cost of their function uh, from processing in within accounts payable as a whole. So those are the, some of the benefits. I think the order of magnitudes are really incredible and really transformational. We're talking about literally millions of dollars of savings in hard dollar savings, um, and then, you know, tens of millions of potentially in working capital benefits as well. Yeah, you can't define productivity much better than that, right? <laughs> I'd like to think so. Okay, so we have those direct hard number benefits, um, but as we alluded to earlier, there's some um, burgeoning types of benefits that come from having that data, the analytics, and the ability to adjust, you know, those knobs and dials of how you're your buying, spending, paying. Um, so let's talk a little bit about some of the ancillary benefits that come when you automate, when you go truly digital, and when you can start to um, explore some of the new innovations around how uh, overall finance organization operates. Yeah, I think there are a bunch of benefits. And, and I'm going to actually start with a slightly different one than you mentioned, which is the people benefits, right? So Again, talking what we talked about before, all of, you know, so many of us are working in hybrid working environments, remote working environments. I think one of the real benefits is to be able to um, onboard our people faster and have better productivity from them fa much faster than you can in a non-automated world. So that's one. Two, I think related to people, again, you really attract a higher level of quality of candidate. Uh, particularly, you know, not to stereotype, but younger generations who are very attracted to technology and we need to incorporate into finance functions over time, they're attracted to great technology and purpose-built technology. And so I think that's another um, really interesting example of a ancillary benefit that you don't think about. Another one is clearly the savings visibility, right? And we've got customers who are using that spend data that you get from invoices that we talked about to identify tens of millions of dollars in savings. That's a, that's a big one. And then I think just the data, you know, we talked about um, having better data associated with invoices. You know, Toyota is another example. If you think about the finance function, one of the things that they really use our solution and the improved invoice data they get is how they monitor budgets and improving that and having better conversations sooner in their quarters and their month months of performance to know where they stand relative to budgets and being able to take action, they would say that's one of the really big benefits. And again, that fits in with, I think, the overall finance theme of being more consultative, being more of a business partner. That's a big part of this is being able to see data, see insights, see trends much earlier in the process. And you can't really do that if it's taking you 
you know, 11 days to process an invoice or, you know, 50% of the data you get is kind of garbage because it's scanned and you have to then go back and manually figure out what it is. So all of those are, you know, I think some of the ancillary benefits we're seeing. Sure. And um, as we alluded to earlier with the um, macro labor issues, uh, allowing the Office of the Finance uh, people to bring more tools to the human resources people in terms of how they can better exploit a gig economy or contractors or different forms of labor than the strict full-time employee now that we're we're trying to have to be innovative, <laughs> whether we want to or not, when it comes to labor. Uh, it sounds like the role of the chief finance people, that office, is now, you know, expanding so that they can help other parts of the of the business. So is there an elevation that we should expect to see in terms of the status and impact that the finance office can have across the business? I think without question that that's the case, right? I, I mean, even look at Basware, right? You know, our CFO has is becoming uh that consultant that business partner that advisor to the other functions within um within the organization and i think that's a very common trend and theme that we're seeing broader influence broader operational span of control but really that changing from you know counter right or you know the the legacy the bean counter kind of uh concept to being the consultant right these are people who are business partners, advising functions and business units within the organization and giving them, bringing them insights from that data that we've talked about and helping them better operate their business and better deliver on results and expectations from profitability, from a growth, whatever it is that that company is, or that function is focused on. That's what they're doing. Um, and then I think the other thing that we could see if we wanted to be, you know, really provocative and think about where we might be. You might have accounts payable organizations who are become profit centers, right? Because of, you know, the cost reduction elements that they can take out, the working capital benefits that they can unlock, the ability to attract more supply, all of those things all help from uh, investment and in innovation and growth. And we might someday be looking at, at, at finance functions that are profit centers instead of cost centers. Interesting. Well, that's a good uh, segue to the last part of our discussion, which is what can we expect next? Um, what's in the future when we uh, exercise true and pervasive AP automation, when we can start to avail ourselves of some of these tools like uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, better analytics culturally within our, within our labor force? Uh, where do you, what does your crystal ball show you coming next for uh, the accounts payable impact when we do it right? Yeah, I think we're going to see a world in the not too distant future where, you know, in 95 plus percent of the time, right, an accounts payable person won't have to touch an invoice. It will be, uh, we, we will have better data from an invoice. We will have, um, better using AI ability to match and handle exceptions. I mean, we already have this today, but it's just going to keep getting better and better. And you're going to see these accounts payable teams become much less, oh, how do I manage this exception? How do I go track down, you know, who the buyer was and what happened and all that to more of, hey, now I can think about what's the best way to deploy my working capital? How do I take this data that we're getting and spot trends in it? So it's, it gets back to what we talked about. It's because we're going to be more and more touchless, more and more automated, it's going to free up that really value added time, I think, of finance functions that is going to be what enables these CFOs to be the business partners, to spot trends, to understand better what's happening in the business and bring ideas and solutions and creativity to the rest of the organization and be a way to fund the innovation that we want to do, to fund the growth that we want and not just be a cost that we've had in the past. Yeah, no better way to get a sign off on something is when you can tell them that it's going to pay for itself, right? That's right. That's exactly right. All right, Jason, where can people go to learn more uh, about some of these trends and solutions about Bazware? And maybe you could point people to where you go to look for good analysis and information about these trends and these markets and solutions. Yeah, I think, you know, at, certainly at Bazware, we do our best to try and uh, be educational and and share 
what we see happening in the industry and what trends are happening and benchmarks and things like that. You can go to bazware.com to see that or follow us on LinkedIn. That's a great, we post a lot of content on, on, um, on our, uh, on our LinkedIn page. And then I think, you know, I like to read a lot of the analyst content that comes out. I think, uh, there's some really good stuff. I know that, you know, recently I've, uh, done some really good reading on benchmarks from Ardent Partners. They've done some really interesting studies. And I think Forrester's got, uh, some interesting studies that I've been reading about as late. So that, those are two great examples. And then, you know, um, uh, Bazware is one of the founders, uh, and innovators around ESPA, which is, um, one of the, leading um uh, kind of group and association of invo- uh, invoice and automation and uh, invoice and accounts payable automation providers across Europe and we're constantly working together to bring forth ideas and innovation on how we can work together to bring more automation to the industry uh, particularly around Europe where it's focused and then frankly Dana most folks joke about me being a chief LinkedIn officer and I- I'm a LinkedIn addict I think there's all kinds of great data that that I find around LinkedIn, and I'm constantly looking on there and finding interesting articles and, and information. So just a few thoughts on where we can find some interesting insights. Well, very good. I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. You've been listening to a sponsored Briefings Direct discussion on how optimizing and automating accounts payable functions gives businesses the insights and levers to better transform. And we've learned how improved control and management over cash flow payables and related functions elevates the overall financial situational awareness and sets the stage for better shaping the office of the chief financial officer for the future. So please join me in thanking our guest. We've been here with Jason Kurtz, chief executive officer at Bazware. Thanks so much, Jason. Thank you, Dana. I'm Dana Gardner, principal analyst at InterArbor Solutions, your moderator for this ongoing series of briefings, direct discussions. A big thank you to our sponsor, Bazware, for supporting our, these presentations. And a big thank you as well to you, our audience, for joining. Please pass this on to your business communities. LinkedIn is an excellent way to do it, as Jason pointed out. And do come back next time.